So I googled what are the most popular foods in America, though not super scientific. What I found was not surprising and exactly what you would expect from the average American. The first link shows that the top 10 most popular foods are number 10 potato chips, then donuts, ice cream, chicken tenders, soda and soft drinks, pizza, Oreo cookies, number three was french fries, number two was hot dogs, and number one, hamburgers. The second link showed that the most popular foods were number 10, apple pie, then corn on the cob, hash browns, steak and baked potatoes, cheeseburgers, fried chicken, grilled cheese, number three is hamburgers, number two, french fries, and number one, mashed potatoes. So, do you think that these foods are a reflection of how 72% of the entire US population is overweight or obese? Well, maybe, and when I say maybe, I mean, yeah, most likely. Now in this video, we're gonna be discussing the PE diet, one of the absolute best nutrition strategies for weight loss, which I would also say recommends eating very different types of food compared to the ones that were previously listed. We're also gonna be going over what areas to focus on for better weight loss results, and I'm gonna tell you how to make it even more effective. And I'm also gonna give you some free resources too, but only if you want them. Now, when it comes to macronutrients, what do you think the typical macros are for the average American? Is it 20% protein, 45% carbs, 35% fat, or is it gonna be closer to 25% protein, 50% carbs, and maybe 25% fat? Well, according to one study, the average American has about 16% of their calories coming from protein, 47% of their calories coming from carbs, 36% of their calories coming from fat, and 22% of those carb calories are actually coming from sugar. And we're really only consuming about 2,100 calories per day. Oh, and also it's estimated that about 58% of all calories are coming from ultra processed foods. So what's the problem here? Well, to me, the big problem here is that we're over consuming carbohydrates and fat. 84% of our food is coming from high energy foods. And as a result, we're essentially just under consuming protein. Also, those carbs and fats are most likely coming from pretty low quality sources too. We're also eating way too much sugar in processed food. And because of all of this, the average weight in the US has been steadily increasing for the last 70-ish years in Again, about 72% of us are overweight or obese, and therefore, something probably needs to change. Now, how does the PE diet fix all of this? So the PE diet encourages eating higher amounts of protein and lower amounts of energy, which are just essentially net carbs and fat. Let's take a look at why protein is important. Now, protein is important because it's an essential nutrient, meaning that we don't synthesize adequate amounts of it, and we therefore need to eat it to survive. It's extremely nutrient dense and also extremely satiating, so we get nice and full when we eat it. Humans also have a very, very strong protein satiety drive, and oftentimes we'll unknowingly decide to stop eating once we've met our body's protein requirements. But one of the big problems that we're currently seeing is because of agricultural and food technological innovations, humans are now more than ever before consuming a super palatable, energy-rich food that is also low in protein. And this overconsumption of super delicious carbs and fats essentially means that we're eating more of these energy rich foods to meet our protein requirements, essentially making us fat in a variety of different ways. Now, what about energy? So from a very broad perspective, carbs are just energy and fat is just energy. We can use carbs as fuel and we can use fat as fuel. Now, when we consume carbs though, our bodies prioritize using them as an energy source over using fat. So this means that anytime we're consuming carbs, burning fat as fuel is very, very difficult. We also find that carb consumption leads to increases in blood glucose and corresponding increases in insulin. And these increases in insulin 
especially chronically elevated levels, can put us in a fat storage state while also preventing us from burning fat. Now, if we also look at this from an even more broad and oversimplified perspective, because we're eating too much energy, and most of this energy is coming from poor quality ultra processed food that lacks micronutrients, we're causing our bodies to store more energy in the form of fat. So I guess the big questions are, what should we be eating? What should we stop eating? And how much should we be eating? Okay, well, why don't we talk about how to calculate your macros first? So when it comes to the PE diet and protein consumption, the goal is to consume your ideal weight based on height in grams. And when it comes to energy consumption, which again is just net carbs plus fat, the goal is to also consume your ideal weight based on your height also in grams. So if your protein and energy consumption are equal to each other, you would get a protein to energy ratio of one. Now, let me give you an example of how this works. First, my starting weight doesn't really matter. So what we'll do is we need to look at my ideal weight based on my height. Now, the ideal weight for someone my height is gonna be between 166 and 202 pounds. So when it comes to consuming protein, my target protein intake should be between 166 66 and 202 grams of protein per day. And to get a PE ratio of one, I then need to consume approximately 166 to 202 grams of energy as well. And by all accounts, a PE ratio of one will work great for a lot of people. However, there's also something to be said about having a PE ratio that's greater than one, which can be even more beneficial for quick weight loss too. And this basically just means that you're eating a less energy compared to protein. So those are the real basics of the PE diet. And it turns out that if you eat this way, about 30 to 35% of your calories are gonna be coming from protein and the rest are gonna be coming from energy. So you're basically eating about twice as much protein compared to what the average person is consuming right now. And this will actually work very, very well for losing weight and getting lean. So after doing the PE diet for about three years and guiding my clients through this, there are a few things that we really need to focus on in order to be really successful with the PE diet. Now, if you've read the book, some of this might be a little bit redundant, but some of this might not be as well. Also, I would highly encourage you to buy the book. It's a pretty quick, easy read, and I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description down below. So there are a variety of ways to calculate your ideal weight and therefore your protein and energy consumption targets. I have my personal favorite, but I'll show you a couple of ways that you can actually do this. Number one is you can use a calculator online like this one found at calculator.net. All you have to do is enter your current age, gender, and height, hit the calculate button, and boom, there you go. It'll spit out some numbers based on several different formulas, and then what you can do is take the low end and also high end numbers, and then use that as a range to determine how much protein and energy you should be consuming in a day. So for example, if we take the average height of a man in the United States who is five foot nine inches and he's 45 years old, hit calculate, and we can take a look at this table to the right. Now, after looking at this table, I can see that the Miller formula results are the lowest at 151.9 and the Hamway results are the highest at 159.4. So therefore, his protein and energy targets should be between about 152 and 160 grams a day. And when doing the same thing for a 45 year old woman who is five feet four inches, which also happens to be the average height of a woman in the United States, an ideal weight range of about 120 to 130 pounds can be used as a target for determining consumption of protein and energy. So it's all super easy and requires very little work. And if you want to check out this calculator, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Another way that you can do this, and this is what I typically do mostly for speed, is use the ideal weight range based on someone's height from 1943, yep, 
1943, a time when there were very few overweight and obese people. So if we take a look at this table here, we can see that the ideal weight of a woman in 1943, who is five feet four inches, is between 108 and 132 pounds. A man who is 5'9 has a range of about 144 to 176. So based on these weight ranges, these are the numbers that I would recommend to my clients to use for protein and energy targets. Now, if you'd like to have this chart, I'll leave a link in the description down below. You'll have to sign up for my newsletter or you could just scroll back and pause the video and look at your height and corresponding weight range, whatever is easiest for you. Now, before we move on to some more tips, if you don't know where to start with this, I have some free resources you can bulk download. One of them is actually a PE ratio spreadsheet where you can take your 1943 ideal weight range and put it into the spreadsheet and it'll actually spit out your exact macronutrient breakdown. Here, I'll actually show you how it works right now real quickly. So for example, let's use both the 1943 table and the spreadsheet together for myself. So I'm 6'1 and looking at this table, my ideal weight range should be 166 to 202 pounds. Now, if I take the 166 number and enter that into the spreadsheet here, and I look at the 5% carb calories tab at the bottom, I can see several different PE ratios that I can try. But if we look at a one to one ratio right here, I should be consuming 166 grams of protein, about 141 grams of fat, and about 25 grams of carbs. And if I went back to the start here tab, I can delete the 166 and enter 202 for the high end of the range. And the spreadsheet will auto populate new numbers associated with consuming 202 grams of protein. And again, the corresponding fat and carb numbers, really easy, really simple and really helpful. And remember, keeping your carbs nice and low is gonna do wonders. So I would really try to just stick with the 5% and 10% tabs only. So if you have a high body fat percentage, you're very likely insulin resistant or you have hyperinsulinemia, which is just having too much circulating insulin. It's not gonna be the case 100% of the time, but most of the time, yes. Now, in general, if we can get our insulin levels down and stabilized, you're gonna be able to lose weight and the PE diet can be very, very helpful with that. And some of the absolute best ways of keeping your insulin low and stable are to do these six things with your nutrition. Number one, keep your carbs very, very low, like less than 5% or 10% of your total calories consumed. This is one of the best ways to control insulin levels since consumption of carbs induces a substantial elevation in blood glucose and a corresponding increase in insulin. And I would even say that most people should probably be following this recommendation. And an easy way to just kind of think about all of this is to just cut your carbs, prioritize protein and fill the rest in with fat. But to be honest, I barely even think about fat. I kind of just think more about protein and carbs. Number two, eliminate refined carbs all together. They cause huge spikes in blood sugar and corresponding spikes in insulin, which means that they're one of the absolute biggest contributors to hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. They also contain very few micronutrients and are often fortified, which is generally not a good sign. Number three, stop eating sugar. I don't really have a lot to say about this one, but sugar is literally one of the worst things a human can put in their body. We all know it, so just stop. Number four, stop drinking alcohol. If you're one of those people who thinks that you can actually lose weight in a sustainable fashion while drinking alcohol at the same time, good luck. Look, I get it. It can be fun, it can be exciting, it can take the edge off, but the simple reality is is that it's most likely gonna hinder and disrupt your progress, so. I just wouldn't drink any alcohol at all if you're trying to lose weight. Number five, completely eliminate refined oils like soybean oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, and corn oil. This one is so important and I think most people don't really consider this when trying to lose weight. I actually might even go as far as saying that 
this could be the most important one on the short list. The fatty acids in these oils literally cause a hypertrophic effect in your fat cells, which makes them bigger, fatter, and insulin resistant. These oils will also make it very difficult for you to burn fat, and they also disrupt energy production in your mitochondria, which is horrible for weight loss and also horrible for life in general. They're also devoid of any micronutrients at all, which makes them basically 100% energy energy that is just going to make you store fat so stop eating these immediately forever number six try intermittent fasting and fasting intermittent fasting and fasting in general are great ways to keep your body in a fat burning state also never ever break your fast with carbs remember we want to keep our blood glucose and insulin levels stable and breaking a fast with carbs is going to induce absolute chaos so be kind to your body and just focus on protein so again, if you read the book, there's definitely gonna be some overlap here, but with those redundancies, I just wanted to emphasize them because they are critical, they're super important. So we've already talked about some of the foods that we need to avoid, like sugar, alcohol, refined carbs, and refined oils, essentially all processed foods. But let's talk about a few more, and then we can actually talk about some of the foods that we should be prioritizing. Dairy, hot topic, yes indeed. Dairy does provide a great source of calcium, but unfortunately, a lot of people are actually lactose intolerant, which can lead to a variety of different digestive issues. Also, certain proteins in cow's milk, particularly casein, can be pretty hard on the digestive system too, especially if the person consuming the milk already has a leaky gut. The only dairy that I really recommend are high fat, low protein, low carbohydrate versions like grass fed butter and ghee, and then also cream. And if you're gonna be making the decision to actually consume dairy, I would recommend going with raw, full fat, locally sourced options. Though it's a complete protein, soy's bioavailability is not up to par with other sources like meat and eggs. It's full of phytoestrogens, is very difficult to digest, and is high in phytic acid, anti-nutrients, and lectins. I would personally just stay away from it. I don't consume it, and I don't miss it at all either. When it comes to legumes, I'm personally not a big fan Protein bioavailability is far worse than meat and eggs, and there are a ton of plant defense chemicals in them. They can also have pretty high carbohydrate content, which is not gonna be ideal if we're trying to win the war with insulin and lose weight too. Now, what's actually on the table though? What should we be eating? So red meat is great, ground beef is good, grass-fed sources are obviously the best, wild-caught, low-mercury fish is good like salmon, eggs are fantastic, maybe even perfect, organ meat is extremely nutrient-dense and oddly not horrible tasting too. I prefer liverwurst from grasslandbeef.com. Chicken and pork I don't particularly love because they're high in linoleic acid due to all the grains and the poor quality feed these animals are consuming. I still reluctantly eat them because I have a family that likes food diversity. Whey is also good, but it's just protein, nothing else. All other types of previous proteins contain a variety of different micronutrients. Whey is just whey, and that's pretty much it. When it comes to veggies, low starch options are gonna be the best. So things like greens, which will also provide a lot of satiety. Cruciferous veggies like cauliflower and broccoli are good too. Cooking your veggies can also be really beneficial when it comes to reducing lectins and other plant defense chemicals. And what about fruit? Anything that is low starch, low carb is gonna be great. I tend to prefer berries over everything else and try to stay away from the fruits that are super high in sugar. Stay away from anything that's dried and now that I kind of think about it, stay away from trail mix with fruit. It's all sugar and the nuts are often gonna be roasted in vegetable oils. All right, that's it. So when it comes to the PE diet, just focus on eating more protein. Most people would actually do pretty great just by doubling the amount of protein that they're currently consuming. Remember to cut carbs, cut sugar, cut alcohol, and refine oils, and only eat 
whole natural food sources and you're good to go. So if you want to download any of those free resources, just check out the links in the description down below. And if you want to learn more about weight loss and what to do to see better results, check out this video right here.